Chapter 1, The Caravel The Age of Exploration, a time of daring voyages and incredible discoveries, a period forever intertwined with a ship of ingenious design, the Caravel. This small, nimble vessel, dwarfed by the vastness of the ocean, became the vessel of choice for intrepid explorers venturing into uncharted waters. The Caravel, with its unique blend of speed, maneuverability, and resilience, enabled voyages that reshaped our understanding of the world. This is the story of that ship, the story of the Caravel, a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of the unknown, a story woven into the very fabric of exploration and global interaction. Join us as we delve into the history, design, and lasting impact of this remarkable vessel. To understand the Caravel, we must journey back to the Iberian Peninsula in the 13th century. Here, amidst the bustling ports of Portugal and Spain, the seeds of this iconic ship were sown. Early iterations, humble in size and scope, were born from a fusion of existing ship designs. They borrowed elements from fishing vessels, incorporating their shallow drafts and maneuverability, essential for navigating coastal waters and rivers. Over time, these early prototypes evolved, driven by necessity and innovation. The demand for ships capable of longer voyages, particularly those involved in the burgeoning spice trade with the East, fueled the caravel's development. Shipbuilders responding to these demands gradually increased the size and capabilities of the caravel, transforming it from a humble fishing vessel into a symbol of maritime exploration. What made the caravel so special? The answer lies in its ingenious design, a delicate balance of form and function. Unlike larger, bulkier ships of the time, the caravel was characterized by its slender hull and high length to beam ratio. This design, often compared to the sleek lines of a fish, allowed for exceptional speed and agility on the open water. The Caravel's most distinctive feature was its sail plan. It employed a combination of lateen sails, triangular sails set on long sloping yards, and square sails, which were more efficient for sailing downwind. This hybrid rig provided the Caravel with remarkable versatility. It could sail closer to the wind than any ship of its time, allowing it to navigate unpredictable winds and explore uncharted territories. Riding the trade winds, the Caravel's role in global commerce. The Caravel's arrival coincided with a pivotal moment in history, the burgeoning age of exploration. European powers, driven by a thirst for new trade routes and the riches of the East, looked to the sea. The Caravel, perfectly suited for long voyages and exploration, became their vessel of choice. It was the ship that carried Vasco da Gama around the Cape of Good Hope to India, opening up a new era of global trade. In 1492, Christopher Columbus embarked on his historic voyage across the Atlantic Ocean, leading a fleet of three ships, the Santa Maria, the Niña and the Pinta. The Santa Maria served as his flagship, while the Niña and the Pinta, both nimble caravels, played crucial roles in navigating uncharted waters. This expedition would ultimately lead to the European discovery of the Americas, forever altering the course of history. This journey also highlighted the Caravel's limitations. Its relatively small cargo hold meant that while it excelled at exploration, it was less suited for transporting large quantities of goods. Evolution of an idea and the emergence of the square-rigged Caravel. As the demands of trade evolved, so too did the Caravel. By the late 16th century, a larger, more robust version emerged, the square-rigged caravel. This variant retained the speed and maneuverability of its predecessor, but incorporated a square-rigged foremast, increasing its downwind sailing efficiency and cargo capacity. The square-rigged caravel, while still primarily employed for exploration and coastal patrols, marked a shift in maritime design. It represented a stepping stone towards larger, more specialized ships like the Galleon, which would come to dominate naval warfare and transoceanic trade in the centuries that followed. Beyond the horizon, the Caravel's impact on exploration. The Caravel's impact extends far beyond its physical capabilities. This ship, more than just a collection of wood and sail, became a symbol of human ambition and the relentless pursuit of knowledge. Its voyages ushered in an era of unprecedented global interaction, connecting continents and cultures previously separated by vast oceans. The Caravel's legacy is etched into the maps we study, the spices that flavor our food, and the stories we tell of daring voyages and new worlds.
It serves as a reminder that even the smallest of vessels, when guided by human ingenuity and courage, can reshape our understanding of the world and leave an indelible mark on history. The Caravelle's legacy is etched in the seas. The Caravelle, though eventually eclipsed by larger, more specialized vessels, remains a powerful symbol of the age of exploration. Its story is one of ingenuity, adaptability, and the enduring human spirit of discovery. The Caravelle, in its own right, became a catalyst for change, forever altering the course of history and leaving an indelible mark on our collective imagination. As we look back on the legacy of the Caravelle, we are reminded that innovation is often born from necessity. This humble ship forged in the crucible of exploration serves as a timeless testament to human ingenuity and our innate desire to venture beyond the horizon. Chapter 2, The Carrack. The Carrack stands as a testament to maritime ingenuity and ambition during the age of exploration. This remarkable sailing ship, prominent in the 15th and 16th centuries, played a pivotal role in shaping global trade, exploration, and naval warfare. Its ability to navigate treacherous seas and transport vast quantities of cargo made it the vessel of choice for European powers seeking to expand their horizons. The Carrack's larger size and sturdier construction enabled it to undertake longer voyages and carry significantly more cargo. From the legendary voyages of Christopher Columbus and Vasco da Gama to the tragic sinking of the Mary Rose, the Carrack's story is interwoven with tales of daring exploration and maritime disasters. Its legacy continues to captivate historians and maritime enthusiasts alike, serving as a reminder of the ingenuity and ambition that characterize the age of exploration. The Carrick's design was a testament to the shipbuilding prowess of the era, reflecting a delicate balance between strength, functionality, and seaworthiness. Its hull, typically constructed from sturdy oak timbers, featured a distinctive rounded shape that provided stability in rough seas. The Carrick's towering masts, typically three or four in number, supported a complex array of sails. These sails, a combination of square and lateen rigs, allowed the ship to harness wind power effectively propelling it across vast distances. The Carrack's cargo capacity was equally impressive, accommodating hundreds of tons of goods, ranging from spices and silks to gold and silver. Its high forecastle and stern castle provided elevated platforms for archers and cannons, offering a tactical advantage during naval engagements. Life aboard a Carrack was arduous, particularly for the crew responsible for its upkeep. Maintaining a wooden vessel at sea, constantly exposed to the elements, was a relentless battle against the corrosive effects of salt water and marine organisms. One of the most pressing concerns was preventing leaks. The Carrick's hull, despite its robust construction, was susceptible to springing leaks, particularly in rough seas. Crew members worked tirelessly to pump out water that seeped into the bilge. Protecting the hull from rot and marine borers was another constant challenge. Shipworms, notorious for their ability to devour wood, posed a significant threat, to deter these pests, a mixture of pitch and tallow was applied to the hull's submerged portions. The crew's ability to keep the ship seaworthy played a crucial role in its success, ensuring it could withstand the rigors of long voyages. The Carrack's arrival on the maritime scene coincided with a period of unprecedented expansion in global trade. European powers sought to establish direct trade routes to the east, bypassing traditional land-based routes. The Carrack, with its ability to transport vast quantities of cargo, proved to be the ideal vessel for this endeavor. Its arrival in Lisbon laden with spices from the East Indies heralded a new era in global trade. European explorers aboard their sturdy Carracks returned home with tales of distant lands and exotic customs. The Carracks' role in the transatlantic slave trade, however, is a dark chapter in its history. Despite its association with the slave trade, the Carracks' overall impact on trade was transformative, connecting continents and fostering cultural exchange. The Carrack, while primarily a merchant vessel, also played a significant role in naval warfare during the Age of Exploration. As European powers vied for control of maritime trade routes, the Carrack's size, strength and firepower made it a formidable asset. Early naval battles often involved boarding actions where opposing crews grappled hand-to-hand -hand on the decks of their ships. The Carrack's high forecastle and stern castle provided elevated platforms for archers and soldiers. As gunpowder technology advanced, cannons became increasingly prevalent on warships. The Carrack, with its sturdy construction and spacious decks, could accommodate these heavy weapons, transforming it into a powerful floating fortress. Despite its eventual eclipse by the galleon,
The Carrack played a pivotal role in shaping naval warfare during the Age of Exploration. The annals of maritime history are replete with tales of famous Carracks that embarked on extraordinary voyages. Christopher Columbus's flagship, the Santa Maria, holds a special place in history as the vessel that carried him across the Atlantic in 1492. Vasco da Gama's Sao Gabriel successfully navigated the treacherous waters around the Cape of Good Hope in 1497. Ferdinand Magellan's Victoria achieved the remarkable feat of circumnavigating the globe between 1519 and 1522. The Mary Rose, a flagship of the English Royal Navy, met a tragic end, sinking in the Solent in 1545. The Madre de Deus, a colossal Portuguese carrack, fell victim to English privateers in 1592. These famous carracks, each with its own unique story, embody the spirit of the age of exploration, expanding European horizons and transforming global trade. The carrack, as a symbol of maritime power and exploration, transcended its physical form to become a prominent subject in art, literature, and cartography. Paintings, book illustrations, manuscripts, and coats of arms often featured depictions of these majestic vessels. Artists sought to capture the Carrack's imposing presence, its towering masts and billowing sails, often juxtaposed against the vastness of the ocean. The Livro das Armadas, a mid-16th century Portuguese manuscript, catalogues various expedition fleets, showcasing detailed illustrations of Carracks. Carracks frequently graced 16th and 17th century maps, illustrating their prevalence in global exploration. Juan de la Cosa's renowned 1500 world map prominently features Carracks along various coastlines. The Carracks' cultural representations reflect its profound impact on the European psyche during the Age of Exploration, serving as powerful symbols of human ambition and technological innovation. Chapter 3 The Galleon The Spanish Galleon these majestic vessels, more than mere transport, were floating fortresses, instruments of Spain's ambition during the 16th century. At the heart of this formidable fleet were the galleons, the backbone of Spanish naval power. Their robust construction, considerable firepower, and ability to withstand the rigors of the open ocean made them the ideal choice for such a mission. The sight of these towering ships, sails billowing with the wind, must have been a spectacle both impressive and intimidating. They represented the pinnacle of shipbuilding at the time, a testament to the skill of Spanish shipwrights and the vast resources at the Empire's disposal. The galleons of the Spanish Armada were not simply tools of war, they were symbols of Spain's wealth, might and ambition on the world stage. Constructing a galleon was no small feat. It was a complex and laborious process, requiring the expertise of skilled artisans and vast quantities of resources. The process often began in the dense forests of northern Spain, where towering oak trees were felled to provide the sturdy timbers needed for the ship's hulls. The galleon's hull was painstakingly assembled, each timber carefully shaped and fitted to create a strong and watertight structure. The ships were designed with a narrow, streamlined hull, which allowed for greater speed and maneuverability compared to earlier, rounder ship designs. This sleek profile was a key factor in the galleon's dominance at sea. The main gun deck, typically located below the main deck, housed the galleon's heaviest guns, capable of delivering devastating broadsides. Above the hull rose the galleon's impressive superstructure, multiple decks housing crew quarters, storage areas, and the all-important gun decks. The Spanish Galleon played a pivotal role in Spain's rise to global power during the 16th century. These ships were instrumental in establishing and maintaining Spain's vast overseas empire, which stretched from the Americas to the Philippines. The Galleons were not merely cargo ships, they were also warships, heavily armed and capable of defending themselves against pirates and rival navies. This dual role as trader and protector was central to the Galleon's significance. It allowed Spain to project power across vast distances, enforcing its will and safeguarding its interests in far-flung corners of the globe. The galleons, therefore, were more than just ships. They were symbols of Spain's imperial might, embodying the nation's ambition, wealth and military power. The Dragon's Teeth, Galleons in Battle. The galleon's formidable reputation was not solely due to its size and firepower, it was also a product of its performance in battle. The Galleon was a remarkably stable gun platform, its robust construction allowing it to absorb considerable punishment while maintaining its firepower. This stability was crucial in naval warfare where accuracy was paramount. 
Despite being outnumbered, the Spanish galleons, with their superior firepower and maneuverability, inflicted heavy casualties on the English fleet. However, the Armada campaign also revealed the galleons' limitations. English tactics, which favoured speed and close-quarters combat, proved effective against the larger, less agile galleons. The men who rode the waves, the men who sailed aboard the Spanish galleons, were a diverse group, drawn from all corners of the vast Spanish Empire. Captains, often veterans of numerous voyages, commanded these vessels, responsible for their ship and crew. Navigators, using astrolabes and charts, plotted the course, guiding the galleons across vast oceans. Below decks, hundreds of men toiled tirelessly to keep the ship running. Carpenters repaired damage, caulked seams, and ensured the ship's structural integrity. Soldiers, often armed with muskets and pikes, provided protection against boarding parties and engaged in hand-to-hand -hand combat when necessary. Life aboard a Spanish galleon was harsh and unforgiving, yet these men sailed on, driven by a mixture of duty, ambition, and for some, the lure of adventure and riches. The enduring legacy. The Spanish galleon, though eventually superseded by advances in shipbuilding, left an indelible mark on maritime history. These powerful vessels, symbols of Spain's golden age, played a crucial role in shaping the global landscape. Their influence can be seen in the development of naval warfare, the expansion of global trade, and the very notion of empire itself. Today, the Spanish galleon continues to capture the imagination, its image evoked in literature, film, and popular culture. Modern-day replicas, painstakingly constructed using traditional techniques, serve as floating museums, offering a glimpse into a bygone era of maritime exploration and adventure. The Galleon story, a tale of ambition, innovation, and the enduring allure of the sea, continues to resonate centuries after these mighty ships first sailed the world's oceans.